What's up? I'm back. Holy shit, what a difference. <clears throat> I'm just making the video on my, uh, after getting back from my drive. If you can get the sway bar, get the sway bar, for real. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Bear with me in the time here while I get the light going. All right, so look. <clears throat> it was a lot of work, but it, it was worth it, man. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my best to get the light going and all that stuff. <clears throat> Let me show you what it looks like underneath the, the car. Then I'm gonna go into a couple of details about what I actually like to drive this thing. <clears throat> let's take a look. Yeah. All right, let's see. Probably from the side here is probably better. Yeah. It's for sure badass. Like, there's no question about it. <clears throat> Thanks for watching my videos. Can't really see shit there. More or less. See the two bottom parts, that's about it. <clears throat> yeah, from back here further. Let's see. Try that. Now you get the point. Let's see the back too. Just for fun. Because it looks cool. And you want to look cool with car stuff. Right? Who's not trying to look cool with their car? So I got matching sway bars, man. What's up? Badass. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Whew, it's been a long day, man. Uh, so to go into some detail about how good it is. I'm not sure if it was a combination of uh, the actual oil change with with the actual um, front sway bar swap. I, I took this thing out for the first time with the new sway bar and I was floored, man. Honestly, like, could not believe the difference I was feeling out of this thing. Car's coming. <clears throat> First thing I noticed was like, it seemed subtle, like it was like damn near nothing, and then um, I don't know, the acceleration seemed like really impacted by the oil change. I don't know why. That's such a huge thing, but it, apparently it is. I mean, obviously neglected something, but I think the VTEC sol sol solenoid made a big difference with the fresh synthetic oil, <clears throat> and. Um, the sway bar what a difference man got a couple of like 40 40 mile an hour roundabouts not far from my house and i was uh rev matching the second gear coming into them and i would just punch it on the way out and it was a completely different car like in completely different car keep in mind like I said, I've got the front and rear nolithane sway bars. And if you can if you could fork up the cash, I don't know what I spent. I'll look into it. If you have questions, let me know. I'll I'll try my best to source the uh you know, details on that. But I bought them one at a time and eventually got sent to my house and eventually got them installed. And here we are now. But Something about the oil change too, man. My car was screaming like, like absolutely different animal. And the sway bar shouldn't be, shouldn't be the uh, telltale for that. But what is would be the the actual like oil change. So that's incredible too. Like, I mean, I'm not neglecting my car. I top it off, make sure it's correct and all that. But it really was screaming like way f like way faster than before I couldn't explain why and then obviously the turn in was good but the, um, here's what it is about the new sway bar leaving a good apex out of a turn say left hand turn 
rev matching second gear, so you're ready to come out of the turn, and I would punch it in second gear, and instead of like controlling the wheel so much with the the new the new sway bar, the, I'm letting the car do the work for me. It feels like, and with the car doing its own work, I can focus on really smashing the pedal, which is what I think the benefit of that is. And I was just just flooring the shit, and it felt great because I'm not worried about like oversteering or understeering the car just wanted to go and um i was able to really focus on accelerating the you know using the throttle to come out of the turn and the car was planted a little bit and keep in mind i've got stock wheels stock tires um only mods in the car the, the a aem intake and um some bushing upgrades upgrades for the uh the shifter and it's got a brand new shifter from honda for sure but no exhaust um fresh plugs um and that's pretty much it again this is a 98 ex accord with 213 15,000 miles it doesn't even matter anymore but it's a lot and um it drives amazing man I'm pretty sure it comes down to basically the, the front and rear sway bars matching finally that really show the character of the of the car itself. And I'm really hyped up on it. So if you got questions about those the sway bars or um, you know where I got them and all that stuff, let me know. And I'm glad to help you out and get you a set yourself before they stop selling them like every other sway bar for the 6th Gen Accord or any part for the 6th Gen Accord in that matter. <clears throat> they don't, you can't get shit for these cars anymore. I have a short shifter I was going to install, install, but I, I've kind of been apprehensive as it's, you know, it's whatever. And uh, to the guy that hit me up about um, documenting the uh, uh, manual uh, fluid change on the transmission here, <clears throat> Genuine Honda uh, MFT, it was M I forget what it's called. <clears throat> Manual transmission fluid, MTF. I'm gonna do a full video on that for sure, just to completely cover that aspect of how to do that and keeping the car level while you do it and all that. But anyway, you know, if you like the videos, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be doing a uh, drive video with this because it is that inspiring to drive now. Like it, for some reason, one of the, the first things I noticed when I really took off from my my, my house was how the steering felt lighter. And I guess that kind of makes sense, considering that the sway bar is incredibly larger than the stock shit. So um, maybe the steering system is not having to deal with so much of the body weight as the, the uh, sway bar is picking up on that part. But um, I don't know. It was really fun to drive. And I got a commute in the morning. There's a couple like entrance ramps and all that. I'm gonna have a fun time smashing through, and then uh, we'll see. Off, off, the, off the top, I would say that ride quality was not compromised at all so far. Again, these are all stock struts, stru you know, stock uh, springs, stock wheels, stock tires, but um, it feels way more um, like it's ready for like movement, and that's a good thing because. You know, these chassis are very good on these cars. The 6th Gen Accord is a very capable capable um, chassis to begin with. The F20A1 is a good motor. It's very reliable, very strong. Doesn't make a crazy amount of power. It is a single cam engine. Of course, we all know that. Um, but people want to say it can't make power. You know, I've seen guys do 7 PSI, 5 PSI turbocharge these things just as they are from the factory and they make good power like that so if you really wanted to make more power out of these things you can do it um, I wouldn't probably push it more than maybe 8 or 9 PSI on a factory block but you know Honda doesn't play they don't they're not like making trash motors especially in the 90s they were dominating and the F 23 a1 is a stout engine and it's got good displacement, which is something to 
think about when you're also considering making power to these things. I would like to see what a good cam could do on an F23A1. Or uh, also, I'm looking to get the DC421 um, exhaust California legal uh, header kit that goes into the stock cat. And then obviously, bump up the size of the uh, exhaust on these things. Because you've seen these videos, and the exhaust looks like a pea shooter straight up. Looks like a straw from a 7 Eleven. But that just tells me how much power this thing could make if I was really interested in pumping up the um, the power on this thing, making more torque, making horsepower. There's a guy on here that was really, really coming at me talking about, oh, your cold air intake is going to be reducing your power. You're you're uh, you're going to be losing horsepower. I was like, listen, man, I drive the car every day. Say what you want about power ratings and all this and that. I drive the car every day, man. And if you're watching this. Trust me, the car makes more power with that AM intake, AEM intake. So if you don't want, it, don't like the numbers, it don't matter to me, man. Like I said, I drive the car. It feels better. It gets better miles to gallon. It it's way more peppy. The VTEC, honestly, the solenoid kicks in way harder somehow. Not harder, but just it feels better. It makes more power. So like, subscribe, all that bullshit, and uh, I'll see you next video. Thanks for watching, and. Uh, let me know if you got questions or ideas or opinions. All right, thanks.